Hi everyone, George here. Very excited today. I'm at Tropica in Denmark with my mate Uri's. Not sure where he is right now, but he'll be along for soon enough. And we're escaping this Denale escapers tank. We're going to use Tropica plants and yeah, we're going to create a lovely, fairly simple scape. And I will take you along on the journey. Really hope you enjoy the video. If you're first time on my channel and you're not subscribed yet, hit that bell and you'll get notified every time I upload a new aquascaping video. So here's Yuri, he's rocking his Calvin Klein pants. Very nice, mate, very nice. Cheers, guys. Thank We've got uh, some Tropica, we're using the powder right now? Yeah. Yeah, so we're just installing the substrate. This is the first stage of this aquascape. And we've got our mini kind of studio here that we've uh, recently set up. This is gonna be dedicated to creating really cool YouTube content for Tropica. So we've got a base layer of the Tropica soil regular type and then we're just topping it off with the powder. We like to top off with the powder. This is better for kind of finer uh, plant root structures and also good for nano tanks because it gives you a better sense of scale. So Yuri's is positioning the hardscape. We've got three pieces of black lava, one nice piece of driftwood and just really nice simple structure but looks really effective. It's like the roots are crawling over the rock and then we're going to use a, a fairly straightforward planting plan foreground midground background with some epiphytes but the first of all we need to kind of anchor the wood down the wood is going to want to float we've got some special glue which is called jbl haru we've used this before in the tropica interzoo tanks that me and yuri's did last year quite a heavy duty glue that we can use to basically glue the wood onto the rock and that's going to prevent the wood from floating. Okay so Yuri's has got a polystyrene box so we're going to go and collect some plants for this scape. How exciting! Look at these beautiful plants. Okay, so here we are in the beautiful moss area. We're gonna get some spiky moss. Look how beautiful this is. It looks a little bit stringy right now, but we can- Cut it. Cut it, yeah. We can apply the technique I showed in my pro tip. Yeah, just yeah. cutting it in small pieces, and then do those, so I would say just- That's, that's plenty, isn't it? Yeah. Cool. Nice. Okay, so we've got some moss. Next, we're going to get some beautiful stem plants. This is Pagostum erectus, one of my favourite plants, not only because it's got a cool name, but it is a beautiful stem plant. So this is going to be like a nice uh, bright green backdrop. And then we want a little bit of red. This is Pagostum stellata, which is an advanced plant. So we want something a bit easier. There's some Ludwigias here, maybe some Palustris maybe around here somewhere, potentially. This looks like palustris, yeah, let's grab that. Nice. Probably only need the one pot, won't we? Good, so that's kind of the background. One of my favourite crypts at the moment, Albeda Brown. This is a nice specimen. Look at this. Beautiful. Three pots of that. This is a nice one. Oh, this is a juicy one. Bucophilundra Red. Nice epiphyte plant. Uh, what did you say? Three pots of that? Four pots? Yep. Cryptocryony, a Willisei. So three pots of that. Long roots. Look at those roots. Check them out. Tropica quality. 
Oosh. The roots are longer than the plant almost. That's when you know it's good. Okay, just to add a bit more texture and bushy effect, we're going to go for some Microsorum Ambrosum. This is a super weed, which is great for starting up an aquarium. The heavier we plant, the more healthy those plants are, the less chance of algae we get. And let's be fair, guys, you cannot get more healthy plants right now from greenhouse to aquascape in less than 10 minutes. <laughs> Check out these beautiful flowers from the Echinodorus. Stunning. While we're on the flower tip, check out these. Lismachia lumliaria, I think it's called. Last plant we're going to use, epiphyte plant, Bulbitis. We love this. I don't use it enough really in my scapes. Oh, look at these, beautiful. And we only need, I think we only need one pot of this here, do you think? Hmm? One pot? Yeah, one pot is fine. So there we have all our pots that we need. Uh, Trolls is going to get the tissue culture plants from the lab. So they'll be ready waiting for us, hopefully and the floating plants we're using in tissue culture and then uh, should go this way yeah. and then uh, working plants exciting yuri's is now preparing the plants so just cleaning up the roots there getting the stone wool off the roots combing it out with some tweezers this is a top tip if you want to get your roots super clean getting rid of that stone wool or rock wool and we've done some plants already. Most of you have seen me prepare plants before. But we basically take them out of its pot, remove as much of the stone wool as we can, split the, the plant up into individual portions if we need to, and then we plant as appropriate. So this is a rhizome plant or an epiphyte plant. This will be attached to the, uh, to the wood, probably, or maybe the rock, depending on what we want to do. Same with the Bucophalandra. And then the other plants, the crypts, the stems, they'll go into the soil. And then we have the spiky moss, which will be also attached to the wood using a special technique, which Yuri's will do later. Exciting. You excited? I'm excited. Yeah, I'm excited. Unfortunately, my microphone decided to die on me, so now we're in voiceover mode. So Yuri's is now planting the Tropica 1-2 Grow Littorella Uniflora. This is a easy category foreground carpeting plant, so it should add a really nice texture and quite a vertical element to the foreground. This will form a full carpet probably in about five or six weeks, I would guess. Now Yuri's has divided the portions up very, very small and we're going to hopefully plant quite densely to help achieve this full carpet quite quickly. But it is only low lighting. We're only using 18 watts. This is the Denelay Trocal LED. So not particularly high levels of lighting over this 50 litre scapers tank. Here you can see the density of the planting that Yuri's has done, tiny portions, and it shows how you can actually achieve quite, you know, quite high levels of density using only a couple of pots. So a real good tip for you there. If you want to get the most out of your plants, especially the ones who grow, divide them up as much as you can. Here we have a beautiful plant, one of my favourites, Staragyne repens, again in the ones who grow. This is going to act as a nice transitional plant between the Littorella and the Hardscape. Nice easy plant again and forms nice compact bushes. So now Yuri's is, he's planted the Littorella, the Staragyne, and now he's planting some Cryptocorini Albeda Brown. Beautiful small crypt, really lovely brown colour, just really nice to mix with the bright greens of the Staragyne. And this is planted almost intermittently, almost randomly between the Staragyne just to add an extra kind of texture and an extra colour and the effect is going to look really great especially once it's grown in. Now Yuri's is preparing the Lysimachia numillaria. This is an old school aquatic plant in fact it's used in ponds as well. It's got a beautiful kind of variegated leaf there you can see the green and the white and Yuri's is deliberately kind of separating the stems otherwise they can look, otherwise they can look a little bit chaotic and this is going to act as a really nice, attractive background plant with quite a distinctive texture 
uh, with a variegated colour as well. We've already planted the Cryptochrony willisii there in the mid-ground that you can see on the right, and we've already planted the Pagostamon erectus. The Microsorum ambrosum is on the back right-hand side, as you can see right there, and we've already put the Ludwigia palustris in the centre background. So this open area you can see right in the background is for the Lismachia, and then finally we can add our epiphyte plant, so the Bulbitis, and the moss to the wood and rocks. So you can see we're planting really densely, and this is a key to success with your aquarium. Plant with the healthiest plants you can, plant with as many as you can, and this is going to give you the best chance of success and the best chance of defeating algae, especially in these early stages where algae is a really strong risk. Now Yuri's is just spraying the plants, stop them from drying out. Some plants are more prone to drying out than others, but better safe than sorry and just keep them all moist. Otherwise they can really suffer and potentially die if they are allowed to dry out too much. So Yuri's has now got the Bulbitis and he's actually going to trim back some of the leaves quite heavily. These leaves are in their emergent form and Bulbitis does really kind of struggle sometimes converting from emerged to submerged form. So what we can do to help this process is trim the leaves off right near the rhizome and then this is going to stimulate new growth and those new leaves will be readily converted to their submerged form. Now we're going to use some special super glue. This is cyanacrylite type, which is a gel form as well, which is much easier and much more user friendly in aquascaping. So it doesn't run like a regular liquid super glue can. Yuri's is putting some protective gloves on just to make sure he doesn't stick his fingers together, I guess. And he's wearing his moss cotton t-shirt, as you can see. So now we add some glue to the rhizome area. We only need a little bit and then we offer the plant up to where we want to stick it to, so probably on the wood, and then just leave it for a few seconds and it will attach there, no problem. Okay, this is a super cool technique that I've actually never used before, so hopefully uh, you, know, you guys can use it, I might use it in my next scape. You can see what Yuri is doing there, he's chopping up the moss into really, really small portions, so there's literally going to be hundreds, if not thousands, of tiny fragments of moss, and then what we do after we've got the necessary amount, we'll, we'll split up all that we've got. And there's actually going to be loads, absolutely loads here. So we just kind of separate it all, make it into like a loose kind of ball shape. And then we can attach this. And I'll show you how we do that in a moment. So what we do is put a generous amount of super glue on the area where we want to cover the moss. So in that case, it's just going to be some on the top of the wood just there. And then, unlike normal techniques where we just put a tiny bit of glue on and then quite a large amount of moss, we're putting actually quite a lot of glue and we're those tiny fragments, we're just kind of spreading amongst the glue. So you get a really nice kind of complex, ready to grow into like a real nice bushy appearance. So... So just a completely different technique to what I'm used to doing and I'm really tempted to try this out at home myself. Let me know in the comments guys, have you ever tried this technique? Have you seen it before? And would you be interested in using it? I think it's a really interesting technique. I think the only disadvantage is that the once the, the glue goes underwater, it tends to turn a white colour. But I think because we're using all this complex, like, tiny pieces of moss, it's going to quickly cover that white and you won't see any other white super glue so really really good technique i'm definitely going to use this at some point in the future so yuri's is doing the same thing putting a bit of glue on there quite a bit we're not being shy and this is why the gel type is better it doesn't run down the wood so it's much more appropriate to use this gel type than the normal liquid type and then once we've got enough on there we can layer on our moss like so. Probably a good idea to use gloves during this process, otherwise you're going to probably end up sticking your fingers together. And yeah, a really cool technique and something that I've, like I said, never done before. Something quite exclusive to my channel. So thanks to Yuri's for showing us this top tip. So now we're fully planted. All the plants are planted in the soil. We've got our epiphytes attached to the wood rocks. We've got a moss attached to the wood there using this cool technique. And now we're ready to fill with water. Now it's a real shame that I did forget my red colander. 
to be honest with you, I didn't expect us to be doing an aquascape uh, like this. So uh, yeah, disappointed. Uh, so we're going to use a different technique. We're going to use some paper towels just at the front there, and then we'll fill up with the water quite slowly, uh, hopefully not to disrupt the soil too much. So here we go, nearly full. And I'm going to do a running water change now. The water is a little bit cloudy. It's probably a result of the, the wooden rocks not being so clean. So we siphon out some, and then we refill again, hopefully to create you know nice clean water. Nice to view the aquascape right from the start. So there we go guys, equipment's fitted, we've got a small Eheim uh, canister filter there on the left, some clear tubing going into some glass outlet and inlet there for minimum distraction on the scape. The lighting's fitted, 18 watt LED trochal from Dunalay, it's a Dunalay scapers tank, 50 litre. We've got the Tropica CO2 nano system on the right there, hanging on the right hand side with a disposable cylinder, this is a 95 gram cylinder. Plant-wise, we've got the Littorella in the foreground, and then we've got some Stauragini just behind that. And then intermittently planted, we've got some beautiful Cryptocorony Albeda brown, and then Cryptocorony Willisii, Bucophalandra red, Bolbitis, uh, Taxophyllum spiky. And then in the background, let's go over the top, we have got Pogostinum erectus on the left. In the centre there, we have Ludwigia palustris, and then we have some Micranthemum umbrosum. So real easy kind of category. All these plants are easy category apart from the Pogostum and Erectus. So we don't need don't need high levels of light. We'll use we'll have the light on for eight hours a day. We'll do plenty of water changes in the first few weeks just to help minimise algae. We've got some real fast growers, the Microsorum, uh, sorry, the Micranthemum umbrosum and the Ludwigia uh, are really fast growers, so these will help prevent algae. And yeah, look forward to giving you an update soon, guys. Uh, I do go to Tropica every month, so I'll try to get uh, a little video uh, from my visits and give you guys an update. So I've got to give a shout out to my mate Yuri's for pretty much doing all of the work while I filmed. Uh, it was a team effort, to be fair. Uh, but yeah, hopefully you guys learned some stuff in that video. I learned some stuff as well, so that's all good. And yeah, it's just a really cool thing to be able to do some aquascaping at Tropica, have access to all these beautiful, super healthy aquarium plants right there in the greenhouse. It's a real privilege to be able to share this with you guys. So really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did like the video, give us a thumbs up, uh, drop us a comment. You might know what question we're going to ask. <laughs> what fish are you going to put in here? <laughs> Uh, there will be updates on this tank. I come to Tropica most months, so this is going to be up updated in the long term, so you can look forward to some more kind of cool content from here. Make sure you subscribe to Yuri's if you haven't already. I'll leave a link to his channel on the end screen. And that's it. I'm going to sign off now. You take care. Keep on scaping. Cheerio. Cheerio.